my guest today runs business analysis masterminds mentoring services he's a storehouse of knowledge when it comes to creating business analysis resumes slash cds as well as linkedin profiles essentially he's here to help you find and secure a business analyst job he also provides interview techniques and strategies for career goal setting he's a trained and experienced business analyst project manager and mentor with over 40 years of experience he has a plethora of international experience in these roles including 25 it positions of which 15 have been contractor roles he's also an avid teacher having taught numerous courses in business analysis for him it's all about knowledge sharing so please help me welcome to today's show joining us all the way all the way from the uk mark bruins hello mark Hello, thanks for having me on the show, Marcus. Uh, I hope to provide uh, a lot of knowledge and uh, exp uh, share some of my expertise with your business analysts in your uh, various podcasts and YouTube channels. Um, that's what I'm here for. Let's see how it goes. Thank you for having me. Superb. Well, you're very welcome to the show. You have this plethora, as I mentioned, this plethora of experience when it comes to not just uh, business analyst jobs, but how to help create resumes or CVs. Uh, um, I believe it's called a curriculum vitae. It's the Latin term for uh, CV slash resume in some parts of the world. So let's start off with some questions on how to build those resumes slash CVs. Um, what are the key accomplishments and experiences that business analysts should highlight to make their resume or their CV stand out to potential res uh, to, to potential employers. Great, that's a very good question. So uh, let's just discuss that resume CV uh, CV curriculum vitae. That's the UK English way of saying it, and uh, resume is used in Canada and Northern America. Um, your key accomplishments and experiences. So let's talk about experiences first. So these should be. Uh, doing words, action words, what you actually did. Um, for instance, developing or facilitating of workshops or gathering or identifying and analyzing and producing and all these things. So ideally, you'd have bullet points in your resume for easy reading instead of long waffle and paragraphs and sentences that we should filter through. I urge you to stay away from bolding to, to showcase uh, certain words. Uh, rather put them in the beginning of the bullet point. So start very powerful with the action verb and say, I developed this and I gathered this and I did this. Now, um, you can't just list your roles and your responsibilities or your tasks or your duties or whatever you call them. Those are basically the experiences. You also have to show that you've gone above and beyond what's expected of you uh, in your day-to-day -day activities as a business analyst and you've actually over-delivered because uh, the CV is to get an interview. When you're in an interview, you want to get the job. So you need to le leverage or leverage everything that you've got uh, to promote you above the competition so that you get that offer of employment. So you want to show that you haven't just sat around and done the work that they've expected you to do, but you've gone ahead and done more than that. And these are actually also sometimes called achievements or accomplishments. You know, we want to show that we've added benefit to a company. And these are, for instance, things like mentored somebody or onboarded or led or improved or perhaps, you know, increased or streamlined or, you know, those are the type of action words that you need to put down in your uh, resume. So, so it's a split between every single role. So it's usually company name, job title, start date, end date. And then I urge my masterminds to split it first into your roles and responsibilities and list in bullet point format the duties, you know, you've got to showcase that you can work well on your own and part of a team. So you want to involve people. You want to add in keywords and things, which we'll get to just now. Um, and then at the end, to achievements. Not too many achievements, not too few, perhaps two, maybe three. Just be careful. If you do put achievements in one past role, then ideally you'd replicate that through your entire resume and make sure that you put achievements in all your roles, even if it's just one. If it's one achievement, don't call it achievements, call it achievement. All right. Um, so be very careful when you add achievements. It's always good to, to, to put numbers in. So in other words, you know, reduce the time by 25 percent and increase this by 73 percent. But be very careful when you do put uh, figures into your achievement section, because there's only really one way that you can have these figures. Now, be careful, because I've always seen people put in 
25%, 30%, 70%, 80%, 10%, whatever, thumb suck, right? That's mm -hmm. that's going to make the, the, the eyes of the interviewer stand and say, you know, how did you come about that 30%? Because, you know, if they're all rounded off, then it looks like thumb suck. So be careful when you add these achievements that you know the answer. So there's only one way that you can measure this, and that's called benchmarking. You benchmark before, benchmark afterwards. You get two uh, figures, numbers, and you apply a mathematical formula or a calculation, and you get the output. And nobody rounds it off. We business analysts. So we want to say 73.24. We might round up to 73 or 78 or 22. So try stay away from those whole numbers. Superb. I want to actually just mention something very quickly. For years, and it still is the case, at least in Canada and the U.S., not to put your photo on your resume or your CV. Now, I know in some parts of the world, like in Europe, uh, the picture, I worked in China and they want that picture on the resume. Um, but uh, with LinkedIn these days, obviously, if you have a profile, your photo is there more than likely. Uh, so it, it's kind of a contradiction. Yes, you don't physically put the picture on, on the resume or the CV, but certainly in North America, if someone wants to go to LinkedIn, they'll see your photo anyway. So, um, but thanks. Yeah, those are great accomplishments. Uh, it's it's all about um, what you accomplished, what you uh, as opposed to a, a, a list, a laundry list of things that you do or did, um, because it's the accomplishment that shows those outcomes, that shows those outputs, and that's really what the company is looking for. So, thank you for that. Uh, second question: How can we tailor a resume or a CV to match the job description and the requirements of the positions? That we're actually applying for okay so um, i always urge my masterminds only apply for a role if you can get your hands on a detailed job description if they don't have a detailed job description you know how do you know if this aligns with your long-term or medium-term career goals this this role and how do you know if you can actually effectively do it so if you apply for the role you need to have a list a detailed job description to say these are the qualifications that we require the applicants to, to have, and these are the roles and responsibilities that you'll be doing if you were successful in your application. Now, if you if they don't list those qualifications or the roles and responsibilities and it comes to interview time and they say, well, do you have a master's degree? Do you have a PhD? Do you have an MBA? Do you have five years industry experience in telecommunications? Do you have, you know, those qualification questions, uh, certification, maybe a CBAP from IIBA, and you don't have them because you didn't know. If you knew, you wouldn't have applied in the first place. So you're wasting your time, the recruiter's time, the interviewer's time, the hiring managers. We're not into time wasting. So only really apply for a job if there's a detailed job description. If there isn't, they're going to probably micromanage you. They're probably going to give you non-BA tasks like user acceptance testing maybe or project management or scrum master or data analysis or things like that. You want to be focused on, you know, gaining practical experience from the theoretical knowledge that you have by doing business analysis tasks so you can build on your experience. So only apply for a job when there's a detailed job description. Now, when it comes to applying for the job, when you have the job description, you know, it's called tailoring your resume and passing ATS and all these things. We don't encourage that at all because um, applying for a job is a numbers game. If you apply for 10 roles, you're going to get zero interviews. If you apply for 150, 180 uh, uh, jobs, you're going to get five to eight interviews. Um, so it's a numbers game. So it takes a long time to tailor a resume because it should ideally be exactly on two pages. And if you start adding roles and responsibilities from the job description, it's going to go over two pages. You've got to shorten it and things like that. Um, you don't want to end up with 50 resumes. And, and which one of those are you going to upload to the job site portals? So I suggest rather instead make a cover note uh, to add to your resume. And that will state Look, I've got a two-page uh, resume. I don't tailor my resume according to the job description, but I do have a 15-page LinkedIn profile. Um, I can do the job as for the job description. Please, here is the link to my LinkedIn profile. Go and have a look. And then when you see a job you want to apply for, you don't have to update your resume. If you've done the role and responsibility, you can just quickly pop over to your LinkedIn profile and add that in the line because that's live and updated all the time. Superb. I like that idea, giving them a link to your LinkedIn profile or a URL to your LinkedIn profile, which may be more detailed. It may just give a quick summary, depending on how you set it up. Um, it may actually also, the idea, at least in North America, is don't go beyond 
two pages, maybe three pages on your resume. If you want more detail, go to my LinkedIn profile. You'll see more. I, I like that idea. Superb. Um, what's the best format and structure for a resume that um, we can use to ensure that it's clear, that it's concise, that it's easy to read? Sure, that's a good question. So as you said, the industry standard, kind of like two pages, um, if you can. But with some of our masterminds, you know, they've got 10 years or more experience or they've had five or more previous positions. Then we urge three pages because you really can't get it on two pages. Anything older than 10 years, you can leave that off. But some contractors, they might have had six contracts in the last four years. And you want to add all those keywords in there as well. So um, basically, we, we offer an 18-page resume and then a two or a three-page resume. And the 18-page one is uh, but sort of like your complete portfolio, everything that you've done in the past, including all the projects that you've worked on and even the references of previous colleagues that they've given you. But basically, the, the minimum that you should have in your uh, resume, and a lot of people forget about this, is name and surname and then the job title that you're applying for. Um, so basically, if you're a business analyst and you've never held the position of a senior business analyst, but you're over the age of 30 and you may be certified or you've got over five years experience and maybe a master's degree or a degree, you can call yourself a senior business analyst due to your experience level, certification and your expertise and your age. So brand yourself, targeting specifically those roles that align with your one-year career goals. Now, what you need is you need all your contact details. So that's an email address, mobile phone number, LinkedIn URL, city that you live in, in case it's a hybrid role or um, and you need to come to the office sometime. They don't want to fly you across North America. Um, basically, um, you need to list the experiences that you've had, certifications that you've done, and any education that you've had as well. Superb. Uh, fantastic. Now, there's something out there that a lot of people may not have heard of, but they certainly have experienced. It's called an ATS or Applicant Tracking System. And how can we effectively use these keywords or these action verbs to enhance our, our resume or CV's visibility in this ATS? This is something that, you know, there are millions, hundreds, thousands of people applying for jobs sometimes. And this computer system has to filter out those resumes. And so it's it's not a human looking at the actual keywords and, and the verbs, action verbs and the and the accomplishments. It's a machine looking at it. So how can we effectively use certain keywords, certain action verbs to help enhance the visibility of this resume, the CV in this ATS? That's a very good question, Marcus. And a lot of people are talking about this applicant tracking system because statistics say that 70% of resumes are thrown out by the ATS bot. It's a piece of software that sits between your computer and the recipient of your resume's computer. And it's got the job description loaded there with all these keywords. And if your resume isn't ATS aware and ATS compliant, then it's not going to get through that bot. Um, so basically, um, to make your business analysis resume stand out, you need to ensure that you mention industry-related keywords, for instance, stakeholder management and functional and non-functional requirements gathering and the facilitation of workshops, et cetera. These kind of industry-related business analysis, industry-related keywords. Um, we as business analysts, we have access to a host of techniques. I personally have a, a list of 148. You need to mention as many of these as possible. If you have used them, that's a very good idea. So you're not supposed to lie in your resume, LinkedIn profile in the interview to get the job and then you know catch up later. So no lies at all, because if you get caught up by one lie, out goes your uh, uh, you know interview and chance, and, and you're just basically wasting everybody's time. So if you've done any of these 148 techniques, make sure that you pepper your resume full of these actions and keywords. Um, action words are, are developing and facilitating and gathering and identifying and analyzing and producing, again, these, these action verbs that you need to put in the beginning. Um, so, so find all these keywords. If you've done them before, make sure that you put them in your resume so that when you do uh, submit your resume for a position that you're applying for, that it doesn't get thrown out by that ATS bot. But there are other methods to apply for a job that doesn't have to go through the ATS bot, but we, are, we won't get involved in that today. <laughs> Superb. I like that word that you've used, peppered your resume. That's quite, quite, uh, quite a profound word. Um, very descriptive too. So what, uh, what common resume mistakes should we avoid to make sure that our resume or our CV is professional and it's impactful? 
All right. So that's a very good question. Professional and impactful. So we as business analysts, we should possess the ability to produce high quality documents written for our intended audience. So let's just break that down. High quality documents, intended audience. So who is the audience? Well, your CV and resume is only written for two people. It's not your mother. It's not your wife. It's not your son or your father-in-law. It's only for the recruiter which I call the gatekeeper, because if you're applying directly to a company, it's going to be the HR lady. So really the gatekeeper, the person that uh, shortlists your CV for consideration for an interview and the interviewers. There's nobody else that needs to look at your resume ever in your life. And these people, these recruiters that employ senior business analysts, they are very educated. They've got a lot of recruitment experience. They've done a lot of business analysis uh, placements before. They started with a junior BA, then a BA worked up to a senior BA. Me, I promote contracting as well and consulting. So these uh, recruiters are highly specialized. They've got a degree. They've got a lot of experience and things like that, but they know the job description really well. So you need to talk in their language. We business analysts, we need to talk in business analysis language uh, when we're dealing with a project team and the business and the subject matter experts. Uh, you know, so they they expect to see that in your resume. They expect to see these business analysis skills, keywords and techniques all over the show. Um, what is a high quality document? So let's take, for instance, a business requirements document, a BRD. Uh, if you take it and it's 30 pages long, you print it in a high quality paper, color, one side and you staple it together and you put it on the project management uh, desk. How does that look? Well, page one has got the cover. So it's got the corporate logo, the branding of the company. It's got the project name, the document name, you as the author and the version number. Uh, so it's 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 got a corporate logo, corporate font. We at BA Masterminds use Verdana 12. So the entire document should be in this corporate font that they've chosen. Um, so let's say section one is an overview. So overview is bold, caps lock. It's in 16 font. You know, that's all got to do with um, the look and feel of the document. Uh, italic, we can get left justify, right justify, and all these type of things. Um, and then as well, we get regional settings. So if you've got Microsoft Word, you control A in your resume and highlight all the text, please ensure that if you're in Canada, you select Canada for the entire document and United States of America for the entire document. And then you hit F7 and you do a, a spell check and a grammar check. That's all got to do with the look and feel. So there's two real important components about any deliverable when you're a business analyst, be it a business case or a benefits realization or an as is process map or requirements gathering in Excel. It's the content and the look and feel. The content must be all there, correct, complete as they expect to see it. But more importantly, people forget about the look and feel and all those aspects that I mentioned just now have got to do with the look and feel. So back to your question about professional and impactful, they expect you to possess the ability to produce high quality documents. So your resume and your LinkedIn profile is your only opportunity to showcase that you do possess these. Um, so also not showing enough details. So perhaps if you've worked at a company for five years, you've only got five bullet points. Well, you're very lazy or otherwise you're unproductive. Nobody wants a person like that. Uh, perhaps not showcasing your ability to work well on your own as part of a team as well. You need to showcase that, that you can be managed or, or work well on your own. Um, Again, not showcasing your achievements, going above and beyond what's expected of you. Um, having a photo, a big no-no, that goes on your LinkedIn profile. Uh, having your resume longer than three pages, uh, also a big no-no. Perhaps too much white space or not enough of it. And again, not being ATS aware. Superb, superb. I, I like this idea of being able to present it as, as professionally and impactfully as, as you can. But also, I believe that brevity is is good too. Like you said, um, no more than two or three pages at best. Um, I just want to point out when it comes to to pages, um, if you're working in a university and you're a professor, the idea is to to list a whole lot of publications that you've done, and those those resumes or CVs can just go on forever, 10, 15 pages type of thing. But as business analysts, um, specifically, we want to be uh, impactful. We want to be um, uh, show an element of brevity, so two to three pages is is probably the best. Um, how can I, I want to talk about personal brands a bit? And um, so, for example, my personal brand is Marcus Udikang. Your personal brand is obviously Mark Bruins. Uh, yes, or the, the business analyst mastermind. 
and you've got the bronze, silver, and and gold uh, background behind you. Um, business analyst mastery, that's your brand. So um, how can we optimize our LinkedIn profile to help to showcase our skills, to be able to attract the right opportunities that reflect our personal brand? That's a very good question. And some people don't even have a LinkedIn profile or they've got a LinkedIn presence, but they do nothing with their profile. Um, I have career strategy sessions free of 30 minutes each. And I just yesterday hosted somebody from Canada and they're a business analyst and they are trying their best to secure another contract role with a lot of experience and things like that. And they don't have, they have a LinkedIn profile, but there's nothing there. So everything's in the resume, but at the top of the resume, there's not a URL to say, go and have a look at my LinkedIn profile. LinkedIn is very, very important component to applying for a job um, because you're not allowed to put a photograph there anymore. Um, so on your resume, so when you submit your resume and you want to be a business analyst and you're working in a project team, you have to be presentable. You can't have a, a blue mohawk and a, a Mike Tyson tattoo on your neck and perhaps a big stud in your nose. You know, you've got to be presentable. So they want to, you know, go and have a look at your professional profile photo and make sure you fit the part. But also they know that your resume is short and that you can put a lot more information in your LinkedIn profile. So let's start with the, with the keywords. So you can add a lot more keywords, these BA techniques, because you've got a lot more space. Um, you can't get headhunted through your resume alone. You get headhunted through the content in your LinkedIn profile, right? Because your resume is on your C driver in the cloud. No one's got access to it to be able to do a Boolean search on it and go and find it and have you shortlisted for consideration for an interview when you're getting headhunted. But they do. Headhunters work with LinkedIn profiles and the, the big job site portals out there. So again, um, you know, you can't just rely on advertised jobs. You need to rely on hidden job market where 70% of the BA roles are and getting headhunted consistently as well. So I urge my masterminds to get to know LinkedIn really well and utilize it to the best of your ability. So firstly, complete all the relevant sections. There are so many sections and LinkedIn keeps updating. The sections are the about section, the featured section, the experience section, skills, education, certifications. Um, you get projects, you get languages, you get recommendations, all of these sections. Go and add them to your LinkedIn profile and populate them. Find out what the character limit is. For instance, the headline is 220 characters. The about section 2600 and the experience section 2000 per roll. So go and look at my LinkedIn profile, Mark Bruins, and you'll see that I use 2599 characters in my about section. So I'm pushing the boundaries. Also, you want to make sure of the look and feel. So use bold, italic, caps lock, um, use emoticons and, and, and things like these for bullet points to really make your profile stand out uh, above your competition when you're applying for a job. Um, a very big thing that you need to do is you need to know your strengths, your strengths. What have you got right now so that you can promote yourself accordingly? And we call that your unique selling points. Um, and we take your unique selling points and convert them into your unique selling proposition. So you determine your one year goal. Let's say you want to be a certified senior business analyst contractor and then go and rewrite your entire LinkedIn profile and your resume accordingly targeting those specific roles. Um, when you were not a business analyst, for instance, you were a project manager or something, then find transferable skills and highlight those right at the top. Superb. Emphasizing um, uh, transferable skills, I think, is vitally important. And you mentioned utilizing or maximizing all of those sections of LinkedIn. There are so many sections of LinkedIn, and many of us may not even uh, know about them or know how to use them um, to, to maximize our profile. So let's let's look at one particular section of, of LinkedIn, and that's called the About section. So how, how can a BA effectively summarize their professional background and career goals in the LinkedIn About section? Great. So let me just get a rewind. What is your goal when you... Um when you want somebody to look at your LinkedIn profile. Your goal is that they scroll. So how do you get them to scroll? Well, whatever's above the fold, whatever they can see on the screen, if it's not impactful and it's not enticing enough, then they're not going to scroll. So if you've got no background image, no profile photo or a very poor photo with bad lighting, a short headline and nothing else, and maybe 20 connections, I can see that you're not serious about LinkedIn. They won't even bother scrolling. So firstly, to get them to scroll, you need a really good, powerful background image. 
a high professional quality photo, a profile photo, to show that you're friendly and approachable and professional, and then a very powerful uh, headline using most of those 220 characters. Also, there's a contact information. So when they're first degree connections, give them your mobile number, give them your email address, let them know the city that you live in um, so that they can contact you and they can see how far you live from the role. Now, when you when they scroll and they come to your about section, that's where you need to promote yourself accordingly. So mm -hmm. I've seen so many um, um, uh, LinkedIn profiles, thousands of them, tens, tens of, um, let, let's say about a thousand, okay, in my over five years. I um, yeah. don't want to exaggerate too much, but they're all rubbish. They're all waffle. They're all full of soft skills, communication, professionalism, this. It's nothing about me. We don't care about you. We want you to come and do a job. So don't say what, what you want out of the job and what you're looking for and that you're immediately available. We don't care about these things. Show us what you have to offer. Show us the benefits. So I basically break it down into a few sections in the About section with our valued gold mastermind so that they reach that 2,600 limit. We start with your unique selling proposition. What have you got right now that you can offer a company that they should hire you? And then we're going to do your top achievements. So you're going to have your achievements, but maybe two or three of those achievements, your top achievements, short, powerful bullet points. You can also list the projects that you worked on or the programs or the work streams that you worked on on a very high level. Not how you did it, but just what you did. And then I like to add keywords, keywords, keywords right throughout, peppered throughout the LinkedIn profile. So we break them down into four sections. Methodologies that you've used, for instance, Waterfall or Agile or Scrum or any of those. Um, then the software that you've used, keywords again, Office, Project, Visio, you know, Jira, Trello, Confluence, Team, Zoom, whatever. Put them in there as well. And then technologies, the tech that you've worked with, for instance, uh, Azure or uh, SQL Server Management or Power BI or Business Intelligence or Data Mapping or CRM and ERP and things like that. And then your top skills, you can list some of your skills there as well. So it's um, showcasing your uh, what you have to offer as well as getting all those keywords in there as well. Superb. Showcasing your value proposition, what you can offer to the company. That's vitally important. Well, thank you, Mark, for giving us a quick, good um, explanation uh, about how to put together a resume or a CV. And I want to mention out there to anyone who wants to do resume or CV uh, modifications or updates, by all means, feel free to reach out to Business Analyst Masterminds. Mark Bruins helps to run this company, and he can certainly give you the best resume the best cv uh, to feel competitive to be able to uh, get those calls that you need a lot of us send out resumes hundreds of them and don't get replies back or go to an interview and don't get a reply back from the first interview so certainly mark can help you do that through the business analyst masterminds um i have a quick question for you mark i've noticed on your background you've mentioned bronze silver gold what's all that about Right. So uh, initially, when I launched my company in April 2019, I developed 17 products and I didn't sell any of them in a year. So I went back to the drawing board and find out and asked my prospects. Um, you know, I just launched bronze in January 2020 and it was seven pounds, uh, UK pounds sterling. I had 11 people on the course. And then I took seven of them across to silver. I can't remember. I think it was 47 pounds for silver. That was six months of mentoring once a fortnight for an hour on Zoom uh, after hours. And then I actually asked and I got feedback. What do you want to know? What do you want to learn? And that's how we base our training programs on now. So we've got uh, copper, bronze, silver, gold, uh, platinum and impact, the products that we have. So basically what I do in this free 30 minute career strategy session is I determine the as is the current state of our prospect. And then I look at the 2B, the one year goal, the future state. Where do you want to be in one year from now? And then we work out action steps and I match them up with one of our programs. I don't teach any theoretical knowledge. We've got four strategic alliance partners who are authorized training providers for the CBAP from the IIBA based in Canada or the BCS, the British Computer Society, which are kind of on par. So I determine in the one year uh, gap, you know, your gap analysis, what do you need? If you need theoretical knowledge, I'll hook you up with one of our training providers, um, but I reinvent you and I ensure that you earn a, a, a big salary. You know, that's what we do. Reinventing the person, that's that's superb. Well, uh, congratulations. 
if anyone out there wants to obviously join the bronze, silver, or, or gold um, uh, aspects of the business analyst ma masterminds, they can certainly do so by contacting Mark Bruins. How can anyone contact you out there if they want to be able to, to join your, your mastermind group? Okay, so we've got a presence on LinkedIn. We've got a um, my profile, Mark Bruins, B-R-U-I-N-S. Well, it's at the bottom of the screen. And we've got a group and we've got a company page. Then we're on YouTube as well, BA Masterminds. On Platform X, we're on um, quite a few different platforms. But we can you can email me at mark at bamasterminds.com. But the best step is just to reach out to me on LinkedIn, send me a connection request with a note, one of my four back office staff will let me know that uh, somebody's contacted me and I'll go ahead and then I'll uh, set up one of these free 30 minute sessions. Uh, what I like to do is look at the LinkedIn profile, ask to submit the resume. We hop on this call, um, highly confidential. Um, I send the recording afterwards, lots of value there. No pushy sales technique. I love what I do. I'm not yet to sell. I'm yet to help the community. Uh, I've been a track chair for the IIBA. Um, you know, I've presented at the IIBA. I've been to seminars all around the world. So I'm passionate about this. Uh, it's not about really the money for me. Um, but uh, yeah, reach out if you're interested and we'll do a, a free assessment and we'll work out your unique selling proposition and uh, look at reinventing yourself. All about unique value proposition and reinventing. Well, thank you very much, Mark. And I wish you a great rest of your day and a fabulous uh, upcoming weekend. And thank you very much for, for being on the Inquisitive Analyst. You're most welcome, Marcus. Thank you. All right. Take care.